to another geography revision video. This video is one of our GCSE case studies. It's based on London, which is our example of an AC city. So how does it link to the syllabus then? So it's from the urban futures topic and is our example of an AC city. And you can see that it spans two different parts. So 5.2a and 5.2b. So how can cities be more sustainable being that second section? Right then, the first thing we need to know is about the location and importance of London. So London is obviously the capital city of the UK. It's economically important to the UK nationally. It contributes over 20% of the UK's income um, and it's the centre of the UK's transport system as well. A number of different airports are located in London. It also has a major influence on its surrounding regional area. Um, Different companies are attracted to the region of the South East due to its proximity to London, which increases the availability of jobs and makes this area of the UK one of the wealthiest. London is also important globally too. Uh, it's a world city and one of the two most important financial centres in the world. A fun fact for you, there are more foreign banks in London than anywhere else in the world. And this has led to having economic hubs, which we look at in a different topic, for example, Canary Wharf. So we also need to know about patterns of migration and why are people moving to London? So po London's population is around 8.5 million. Between 2009 and 2019, there was a 9% increase um, in net migration. So the, the population of London is increasing over time. Nearly 20% of London's university students came from overseas. And this was encouraged by a number of top class universities in the city. And you can therefore um, understand why it has quite a young population um, as a city in comparison to other places in the UK. So this influx of migrants has led to London becoming the UK's most ethnically diverse city, and that's had an impact on the character of the city. So, for example, Brick Lane is famous for its curry houses due to the Bangladeshi community settling in the area. There are a number of distinctive ways of life in London. Firstly, the West End is home to many theatres, where the world's top musicals and plays are regularly performed. Some of the UK's most popular museum and art galleries are in London. As previously discussed, London has very high ethnic diversity, and this means that some areas such as Chinatown have a high proportion of people from one ethnic background, and this leads to lots of food, music and goods from that culture that can be found in the area. In addition, there are also many big festivals celebrating different cultures and ethnic backgrounds. For example, the annual Afro-Caribbean Notting Hill Carnival. Finally, London has many world-class sporting facilities. Each year, the city hosts mass participation sporting events, for example, the London Marathon. So when looking at ways of life, the key thing here is what makes London unique in comparison to other places in the UK. But there are a number of challenges that London faces and I've picked two here to focus on. And I think if you've got this growing population, these are two quite obvious challenges that the city is likely to face. So the first one being transport. As London becomes more congested, it has an impact on the transport infrastructure in the city. So you can see here average traffic speeds are between, between you know, the working day, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. are only eight miles an hour. And that has an impact on people being able to get to work um, goods, being able to move around the city. But also importantly, if people are sat in traffic jams, they are likely um, to be polluting. One million passengers arrive by train each day and the London Underground um, is struggling with overcrowding. And that's more than doubled that overcrowding on the underground between 2000 and 13 and 2015. And that's really important when we're thinking about social sustainability, a people's comfort and their quality of life, but also um, being delayed because of that congestion um, on public transport. But also we've got housing availability. As the population increases, the supply of homes has not been enough um, to meet demand, which has led to house prices and rents rising. Average rents in London are twice the average in the UK and house prices are 95% higher in London than in Edinburgh 
and 161% higher than in Cardiff. And I chose those two as the capitals of Scotland and Wales to put into perspective how high house prices are in London. And that's led to many people um, sharing homes, um, house sharing is more common, and this again can lead to overcrowding. So what solution then are we going to focus on? So we're going to focus um, on transport and the solution that can make it more sustainable. Remember that 5.2b part looking at sustainability um, in our solutions. Um, so we're going to look at how has London tried to cope with the issue of congestion. So firstly, um, in 2003, the congestion charge was introduced in London with a daily charge of £11.50 between 7am and 6pm on weekdays. So you can see here it's really trying to target the rush hour, the work, um, commuting people that are doing it by car. And in the first year up to 2004, traffic delays were 30% lower because there were fewer cars on the road than before it was introduced. However, people have now either become used to that fee and are used to paying it or they found other routes, um, which has actually just shifted that congestion onto other roads in the city. And so to try and um, deter people further from using cars, in 2021, Sadiq Khan raised congestion charge to £15. It's now seven days a week and 24 hours a day. So rather than just targeting um, the commutes, it's now targeting anybody driving in the city. And on top of that, 18 years after the congestion charge, even with this increase in pricing, traffic congestion and particularly air pollution was still a major challenge for London. And so the ULEZ, the ultra low emission zone, was introduced in 2019 which operates in the same areas currently as congestion charge, but is expected to expand quite far out um, of the city to the north and south circulars. It's £12.50 a day, and again, you pay, pay this 24-7. But the key thing here is not every car pays the ULEZ. It, it targets the most polluting vehicles, so especially diesel vehicles, and only if your car is a high polluting car do you pay but actually for example diesel cars any car before 2015 so any diesel car over six years old has to pay the ULEZ so I think that shows you that actually a lot of cars perhaps are having to pay um, both the congestion charge and the ULEZ and you can see that would take you up to £27.50 per day so let's have a look then at an exam style question for this. So um, we've got for an advanced country city, so an AC city you have studied, discuss one initiative to make the city more sustainable. It's a six mark question, so we're going to follow the PEED PEED structure. And it's also a discuss question, which means it's an AO1 and AO2 question. I think the key thing is that we must link to sustainability in the answer. So I'm going to give you um, some time now to have a go at this question. Pause the video and once you've had a go, play to read part of a model answer. OK, so I'm going to go through that model answer now. OK, so here is a model answer then. So you can see I've started with a point. I've started with the fact um, about congestion charge. And I think the really key thing for this question is it's one initiative to make the city more sustainable. So our initiative is going to be reducing congestion. We would look at one paragraph on the congestion charge and one paragraph on the ULEZ. So the congestion charge introduced and I said what the purpose of the congestion charge was for point. I then given some evidence about when was it introduced, um, what did it consist of, what was the charge and how did that change in 2021? I then said, OK, well, how has that linked to its aim? So has it reduced the amount of cars on the road? And then finally, I've gone back to say, well, although it had a very short term positive impact, when I'm thinking about sustainability, I'm thinking long term. And the fact that air pollution is still so significant and congestion is still so significant. 
we can link that it's not had um, a positive long term impact on improving environmental sustainability in the city. So here you really need to get to grips with this idea of sustainability. For your second paragraph, we then expect you to be writing about the ULEZ. What is it? When was it introduced? How might it be positive for environmental sustainability? The same sort of idea of reducing congestion. And then your development point may be thinking about economic sustainability and the fact that actually the poorest in society will be hit hardest by this fee. And is that um, therefore the fairest way to control congestion in London? OK, but well done today. If you have any further questions, please just drop one of the geography team an email.